Okay. So the guidelines for curve sketching, the very first step is you are going to find the domain and the X and Y intercepts. And then next step, you will find the symmetry. Is it an even function or is it an odd function? And then next you will find asymptotes and you must use limits and XY charts to find your asymptotes. You cannot skip this, this process. If you do not use limits, I will take points off. Okay. Uh, D, you'll find intervals of increase and decrease. So that means you'll take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, solve for X, find max and mins. So D and E go together. Step E says find local max and mins. Well, we know we do that from the first derivative. Okay. And then F, you find concavity. And to remember to find concavity, we do the second derivative, set equal to zero, solve for X and make a sign chart. So we're gonna be doing all of that today. So let's get going. And I just saw you had questions, Adolfo. Uh, I guess after. I just looked at the chat. All right. So, and again, I'm only going to do one problem because this is probably going to take maybe 30 to 45 minutes. Who knows? Could take an hour as well. It's going to be long. All right. Ew. Yeah. Gross. Oh, hey, Ryan. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Mark. Fast and Furious in space, man. It's going to be great. Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was watching the preview today and I was like, this is going to be great. And in the end of the preview, they have a car strapped to the top of a plane and the car has like rocket boosters on it. <laughs> and and they have some some cheap made astronaut suits that they have together with duct tape and like the fish tank heads. And I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, no. Best oh, no. When's that series just going to die? Never. I hope they keep making them. <laughs> oh, I started laughing so hard. I think I woke the baby up when I watched that. <laughs> All right, step one. Find domain. So we know we take the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. And again, the reason we're doing this is because it's a rational function. So for all of these curve sketching, everybody's going to get a rational function for their project. OK. And you get x squared equals 1. You square root both sides, and x cannot equal plus or minus 1. So there's our domain. And you could even put it in interval notation, negative infinity to negative 1, union negative one to one, union one to infinity. Oops. Okay. And then the next part is your X and Y intercepts. So this is all going to be in step one. So we'll say X intercept, you let Y equal zero. And for X intercepts on a rational function, X intercepts will always just come from the numerator. So that's a nice little shortcut. All you have to do here is set the numerator equal to zero and solve for X. Okay, which means divide by two, you get X squared equals zero. Square root both sides, no matter what, you get X equals zero. And then look for the y-intercept, where you let x equal 0. So for the function above, we'll have y equals 2 times 0 squared over 0 squared minus 1, which everything is just 0 over negative 1. So you get 0. All right. And this would create the point zero, zero. And this would also be the point zero, zero. Okay, so there's our first step, finding domain and the X and Y intercepts. 
All right. That one's purely algebraic, which means we go on to step two. All right. Uh, looks good. I'll just make it purple. Sure. Step two, find the symmetry. So we want to know if it's even or is it odd. So this means that to find out whether it's even or odd, we're going to plug in negative x for every x. So we're going to say f of negative x, and we're going to plug negative x into the original function for every x. So you get negative 2, I mean, sorry, you'll get 2 times negative x squared over negative x squared minus 1. Okay. Well, negative x squared just becomes positive x squared. So this will give us 2x squared over x squared minus 1. Okay. So remember that if it's even, you'll get the original function back. If it's odd, you'll get the function back, but everything is negative or all the signs have changed. Okay. So this, we get back the original function, which means that this function that we're working with is even. Okay. Okay, and now rational functions are definitely tricky. So let's say you don't know if you got an odd or even function, right? Well, more, more like odd. So remember to be odd, if you plug in f of negative x, you'll get back negative f of x. In this case, we didn't get an odd, but for your problems you're gonna get, I think most of you will most likely get odd functions. So you wanna check them. And in order to check a function to see whether it's odd, you just take negative one and multiply it by the original function. So your check would look something like this, negative one times, and I'll just use our function as an example, even though it's even, you would plug in negative one and you would get negative two X squared over X squared minus one. Now let's say that if your function was odd, then whatever this answer is would match up with your work above, which would verify that it's odd. So for odd functions, always, always double check. And all you have to do to double check is multiply the original function by negative one. That's it. Okay. Doesn't work for ours because ours is even. Okay, so there's step two. There is the symmetry. Now we move on to step three, which is finding your asymptotes by limits. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our vertical asymptotes. So we'll say step three. And I'll say vertical asymptotes. Okay, and to find vertical asymptotes, well, if you remember algebraically, that asymptotes come from your denominator on a rational function. So yes, we will have vertical asymptotes at positive one and negative one, but we want to prove that by limits because since we're graphing it, we're, wanting, we're gonna wanna show that as we approach one or negative one, is the graph gonna go to infinity or is the graph going to go to negative infinity? So we are going to analyze at the first value of x at negative one. And to do that, we have to analyze from the left side and the right side. Okay, so I'm gonna say at x equals negative one. This means we wanna know what is the limit as x approaches negative one from the left of our function, I'll just say f of x. And what is the limit as we approach negative one from the right? So the only way to do this 
is again to make an xy chart. So for our limit at x equals negative one, we're gonna have a little xy chart here. So I'll put it here, x and y. And remember that we are approaching negative one from the left. So we want numbers that get really, really close to negative one. So we can start with negative 1.01, negative 1.001, and how about just negative 1.0001. These numbers get really, really close to negative one from the left. Okay, and of course, we're gonna use a calculator. So I'm going to use good old Desmos, which I have up already. There we go. Close that, close that, close that. Or should I just hit new? No, oh, made it. Okay, well, maybe I should have put the function there so I know what we're working with. One moment. It was two X squared over X squared minus one. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna type in here. Two X squared over x squared minus one. And then I'm gonna choose the table and I'm gonna type in the values that we have here. Negative 1.01, negative 1.001, and negative 1.0001. The more zeros, the more information of course let's see get those xy charts there we go okay so i have 101.5 i have 1001.5 and then i have 10001.5 so what we can say for this limit as x gets closer and closer to negative one from the left, where are these y values headed? To infinity. To infinity. Good. So based on our xy chart, we know that at negative one from the left, your limit is going to go to infinity. Okay. And now we need to do the same for the limit for the right side. So we're going to have another one. We're going to say the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of 2x squared over x squared minus 1. Again, make your xy chart. Here's x, there's y. And we want to choose numbers that get really close to negative 1 from the right side. So that'll be negative 0.9, negative 0.99, and negative 0.999. Maybe yeah, we'll see if that's enough information. Okay, so since I have this xy chart up already, I'm going to plug in these values. Negative 0.9, negative 0.99, negative 0.999, and let's say that's not enough information. So I'm going to go one more. I'm going to add more nines in there. 0 0.9999. There we go. Okay. So I have negative 0.9999. And here I have negative 0.8.5, negative 98. So different. Yeah, well, let me write. Come on. Negative 98, negative 998, and negative 9,998. So we can say now that as x approaches negative 1 from the right, our limit is now headed towards where? Negative. Negative. Good, negative infinity. Okay, 
So this proves the existence of an asymptote at negative one. So as we approach negative one from both sides, one tail heads up towards infinity and one tail heads down towards negative infinity. So we must prove the existence of these asymptotes by limits, which means we're not done because now that was just examining x equals negative one. From our domain, we now have to examine x equals positive one, doing the same exact thing. Okay, so let's do that. So we'll say at x equals positive one, we have the limit as x approaches one from the left of 2x squared over x squared minus one. Okay, x, y chart again. And we're approaching one from the left. So I want numbers to the left of one. So we'll do 0 0.99, 0 0.999, and 0 0.9999. Okay, and good thing I still have this chart up. So if I put those numbers in, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, and 0.9999. There we go. We are going to get negative 98, negative 998, and negative 9,998. So we see that as we approach one from the left, my graph is going to head towards where? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. Okay. And then one more time. So now we have the limit as x approaches one from the right of 2x squared over x squared minus one. Same thing here, x, y chart. And we'll choose numbers to the right of one. 1 1.01, 1 1.001, 1.001. Type them in. 1.01, 1.001, and 1.0001. Okay. So 101, 1001, and 10,001. That should be enough information. But if you don't think it is, again, add more zeros in here and you'll see where your limit's going. But this looks like enough information to say that as x gets closer to one from the right, where are my y values headed? Infinity. Infinity. Okay, cool. So let's see what we have we have proven that a vertical asymptote exists at negative one by the use of limits. One tail goes to infinity, the other tail goes to negative infinity. And now we have proven that there is a vertical asymptote at one by the use of limits, showing that one tail goes to negative infinity and another tail goes to infinity at that X value of one. So now we know that we have vertical asymptotes at X equals negative one and X equals one. So this is the way you are going to have to prove it on your project. Any questions so far? Okay, which means next we have to prove the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so to prove our horizontal asymptote, we are going to do it by either the power trick uh, or lopy talls, and then we're gonna have to prove it by making another XY chart. So let's go ahead. And I'll just come back here for a second. All right. 
So now we'll say horizontal asymptote. So remember that horizontal asymptotes can only be found by taking the limit to infinity or negative infinity. So if I just said the limit as x approaches positive infinity of 2x squared over x squared minus 1, well, I can use L'Hopital's or I can power trick it. You guys have an option. Here, it's probably, it could be easier just to power trick it. And remember a limit at infinity, you would just divide everything by the highest power of the denominator. So this would be 2x squared over x squared over x squared over x squared minus one over x squared. And then you would get the limit as x approaches infinity of two over one minus one over x squared. And as x heads towards infinity or even as x heads towards negative infinity, what number is one over x squared going to become? Zero. Zero. Hey, you can leave it like that, right? That becomes zero and we get the limit as x approaches infinity of two over one is two. So this means we have a horizontal asymptote at two. And let's say you wanted to use L'Hopital's. Well, first you would do, if you plugged in infinity, you would get infinity over infinity. So then you would do L'Hopital's and you take the derivative of the numerator, over the derivative of the denominator. So this would give you 4x over 2x, which, hey, you'd get the limit as x approaches infinity of 2. And we'd be there. So look at that. L'Hopital's was actually a lot faster. So when you do your horizontal asymptotes on the project, you will either prove it by the power trick, which I showed the first way, or you will prove it by L'Hopital's, which I just showed the second way. And then you will also prove it by making an XY chart. So here I said, let, let X go to infinity, which means you get to choose extremely large values. So whenever I've given this XY chart in the past, students don't know what numbers to pick. And I say, hey, you pick numbers that goes to infinity. And they'll be like, five? I'm like, that's a start. <laughs> Why not 500? Why not 5,000? You want to choose numbers that get closer and closer to infinity, that get extremely large. So here, you could start off with 10. And then I could go to 100. And then I could go to 1,000. And then if I wanted... I can even change up the numbers and say, let's go to 50,000. Again, you want to choose numbers that get larger and larger and larger towards infinity. Let's say you made the limit as x went to negative infinity. This means you want to choose numbers that get closer and closer to negative infinity. So you would just take all these numbers and make them what? Negative. Negative. There you go. And if you want, add more zeros. So let me go back to Desmos. Let's see if these numbers work. If these numbers don't work, then we'll choose other ones. Okay. So now I still have this lovely XY chart popped up. So I'm going to type in my new numbers. 10, 100, 1,000, and 50,000. And look at the Y values here. They all say what? Two. Two. So you get you get 2.02, .02, you get 2.002, .002, and then the zeros just keep getting longer. But we know that this all just rounds to two. So there we go. We have now proven 
the existence of a horizontal asymptote, one by power trick, one by L'Hopital's, and another by the xy chart. So all of this still becomes two. All right. Cool. So that's what you have to do for these steps. So that is finding the horizontal asymptotes and the vertical asymptotes. You must use your xy charts to do so. OK, any questions so far? And now I've written too big. Let me go ahead and fix this. One moment. Let's minimize you there. There we go. And then, yeah, that can go there. And then here. All of this go right there. And yeah, that'll be fine. It's good if it overlaps. Okay. Perfect. All right, which means we move on to step four, which is going to be finding maxes and mins by intervals of increase or decrease. So we're going to put steps four and five together. OK. All right. So let's do that. OK. We'll say four and five. So I'm going to rewrite the function here. y equals 2x squared over x squared minus 1. And now we're going to take the derivative. OK. So here is f, here is g. And f is 2x squared. g is x squared minus 1. f prime is 4x. g prime is 2x. This means that y prime is going to be f prime g, 4x times x squared minus 1 minus g prime f, 2x times 2x squared, all over the original denominator squared. OK. And don't make a mistake, because that would be awful. OK. Clean this up. Y prime, you get 4x cubed minus 4x minus 4x cubed over the original denominator squared. And this would clean up to negative 4x over x squared minus 1 squared. There's our first derivative. And now we are going to set it equal to 0 and solve for critical numbers. OK, so y prime equals 0. And since this is a rational function, you will set the numerator equal to 0. Do that here. Numerator, so you'll have negative 4x equal to 0, and then x will equal 0. Here is our first critical number. All right. And then we'll set the denominator equal to 0. And you'll have x squared minus 1 equal to 0, x squared equals 1, 
and x equals plus or minus one. Can these be considered critical numbers? No, because the graph is undefined at that point. Good. Good, right? Well, we learned from your problem you had earlier, right? So yeah. since we get plus or minus one, we can't consider these critical numbers because you cannot plug them in to the original function because our domain says x cannot equal positive or negative one, which lucky for us means that we don't have to plot these on a number line now. So these are not critical numbers. We can say that f of positive or negative one does not exist. Okay, so next is our sign chart. All right, so here's our sign chart. Here is negative infinity, here's positive infinity, and all we have to plot is zero. Okay, and now my interval is from negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity, which means we now pick test numbers. And from negative infinity to zero, we'll pick negative one. From zero to infinity, we'll pick one. And remember that this is a sign chart for the first derivative. So we will plug these in to the first derivative. Okay, so you'll have f prime of negative one and f prime of one. Should right. we use those ones? Or is it just going to, those numbers might not work or will they? Oh no, since it's a prime, I forgot that it's prime. Well, no, you're right. If we plug them in, let's see. So maybe we should plot those critical numbers just so we know what to choose. Because if I plug in negative one, You're gonna that's, get zero in the that's not gonna work here, right? Yeah. Okay, so then we will not, we will still include those non-critical numbers then because we'll need them there. So here we'll have negative one and here we'll have one. Okay, so just reverse it a bit. Nothing big. So there's negative infinity to negative one, and then negative one to zero, zero to one, and one to infinity. I mean, we probably could have picked any number other than negative one and one, but it's fine. Yeah, I was going to say we could just use two. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think it's good to have these in there as well, because these negative ones still represent asymptotes. So here you'll have negative two, negative 0.5, and then repeat 0.5 and two. Okay, much better. All right, and you get F prime of negative two, F prime of negative 0.5, F prime of 0.5, and f prime of two. Okay. Now, of course, why not use Desmos? Almighty all knowing, and I'll type in our first derivative. Here is negative four x over parentheses x squared minus one. And then I'll still do that table. Oh, it needs to be squared, of course. I'll still do that table feature. 
And now over here, all we are worried about is the sign. We don't care about the number as the output. So first negative two, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and two. Okay, so we see that at negative two, I get a positive output. At negative 0.5, I get a positive output. And then at 0.5, we are negative and negative. Okay, perfect. So this means that for my sign chart, we increase, increase, decrease, decrease, which means we are now looking for maximums and minimums. And I guess here is where we can exclude negative one and one, because can we even use negative one and one? No. No because you have asymptotes that exist there. So the only number we should look at is what? Zero. Zero. So look at zero. Zero, you increase and then you decrease. So zero is gonna be a local what? Max. A local max, good. So this is going to be at x equals zero, you have a local max. And now you need to find the exact location of that max, which means you're going to plug it into the what? Original function. Original function. So your original function is 2x squared over x squared minus 1. So you'll get 2 times 0 squared over 0 squared minus 1, which just becomes 0. So your local max is at zero, zero. Woohoo! And there's the first derivative. Now we need to find the second derivative and concavity. But any questions so far? All seems pretty repetitive from what you've been doing so far, right? It's a nice refresher. <laughs> I mean, all of that, right? Oh, yeah. that's a good refresher. All right. But like I said, it's everything we've learned up till now, right? So now we're just applying everything we've learned in calculus so far. <clears throat> OK. Now we have six. Let me draw a line just to see what space I'm working with. Let's see. I can't go past this line. I'll erase it later. <laughs> all right. Zoom, zoom, zoom all the way in. Here is step six. What's up? We're almost there, right? We're almost there. So step six, I have, I'll start with the first derivative. So we have y prime equal negative 4x over x squared minus 1 squared. We now take the derivative of this one. So there's f, there's g, and f equals negative 4x, and g equals x squared minus 1 squared. OK. And then f prime is negative 4. g prime uses chain rule. 2 times x squared minus 1 times 2x. So g prime is 4x times x squared minus 1. And again, watch every step that you do because you don't want to make a mistake. All right. Now here is going to be y double prime, and it's going to be f prime g, negative 4 times x squared minus 1 squared minus g prime f, 4x times x squared minus 1 times negative 4x, 
all over the original denominator squared squared. So you have x squared minus 1 squared squared. OK, and now let's go ahead and clean up this numerator. Leave this first part alone. And you can combine the negative fours together. So we're going to get positive 16x squared times x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 to the fourth. OK, more cleanup. What could you factor out of the numerator? x squared minus 1. And what else? Negative 4. And 4, a negative 4 at that. So we're going to take out a negative 4x squared minus 1. I'm going to put a bracket to be neat. And if I factor out negative 4 times x squared minus 1, what does this leave me with in the numerator? So this factored one. from that. What does that leave me with? 1, one plus, plus 16 x squared. squared. This has a 2, though, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So 1 x squared minus 1 is what you meant to say, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No. <All> right. <laughs> and then this factored from that. What does that leave me with? 4x squared only. Good. Negative. OK. And now all of this is over x squared minus 1 to the fourth. OK. More cleanup. And you see that this guy and this guy can what? Cancel or reduce, right? So that cancels, and then this power becomes a three. So you get negative four times, and then you have x squared minus one minus four x squared. You can drop those parentheses, and x squared minus four x squared leaves me with what? Sorry, three x squared. Negative. 3x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 cubed. All right. There it is. There's our second derivative. You can make these parentheses now if you want. Woo. I mean, you can even take that negative out in front if you wanted, but we don't have to. OK, now you have the second derivative, and we must set it equal to 0. Good times. So we're going to say y double prime equal to 0. And again, you set the numerator equal to 0. So you would have negative 4 times negative 3x squared minus 1 equal to 0. We don't need that negative 4 anymore. So you would just be left with negative 3x squared minus 1 equal to 0. Move the 1 over. You get negative 3x squared equals 1. Divide by negative 3. And x equals negative 1 third. What's wrong with this? Imaginary number. These give you imaginary numbers. Imaginary, like this font color. Yeah. All right. Now, you set the denominator equal to zero.
And again, it's just x squared minus one. Oops. And x squared equals one and x equals positive or negative one. All right. These are now called my possible inflection points. These are my pips, which means the next step is we make a what? A sign chart. Sign chart. And we'll put down negative one and one. And then here are my intervals, negative infinity to negative one, negative one to one, and one to infinity. And then my test numbers. three intervals, three test numbers. So x equals negative two, x equals zero, and x equals two. This is a sign chart for the second derivative. So you will plug these into the second derivative. And once again, Desmos for the win. Hey, that looks nice. Bam, get rid of that line. Okay. I've seen better. <laughs> Whatever, man. All right, there we go. I can get rid of that, don't need that anymore. I'll need that original function. So I'll type in our derivative, second derivative here, negative four times negative three X squared minus one over X squared minus one cubed. There we go. And then table feature, and here we go. Negative two, zero, two. And again, we don't care about the number. We only care about the sign. So at negative two, we get positive. At zero, we get negative and then positive. Okay. Now back to here. So from negative infinity to negative one, we are positive. Let me zoom in here. Boom, 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 boom. We are positive, which means we are concave up. Then we are negative, which means we are concave down. And then we are positive and we are concave up. Okay, cool. Now, we look at our possible inflection points and determine whether they are actual points of inflection. So we look at negative one. We go concave up to concave down. We go from positive to negative. This means that the sign changed and x equals negative one is an inflection point. And then you look at one. You went from negative to positive. We went from concave down to concave up, which means that one is also an inflection point. And now to find the actual point of inflection, we plug these numbers into the what? The original function. The original function. But what's going to happen? 
it ain't gonna work. It's not gonna work. Because at negative one and one, we have what? Zero in the denominator, undefined. Which makes it a vertical asymptote, right? Oh, yeah, that would. Vertical asymptoters. Vertical tater tots. Tater tots. OK, which means that we have all the information we need now. So let's go ahead and graph it, starting by looking at step one. Let's go ahead and get those points. So here, step one, we have the points 0, 0, and we have vertical asymptotes at negative 1, 1. So let's go ahead and plot those. All right, so I think we can even space this graph out. So let me see. I'm going to make this 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then our x and y intercept is at 0, 0. And then we have vertical asymptotes at 1. and negative one. Okay, which we had proved, right? And then we go back up to step, what is it? Three and look at our horizontal asymptote, which happens to be at two. So again, I think I have the room, so this will be two. And there's my horizontal asymptote, which is at two. Okay, so we use the information from step one. We've used the information from step three. Now we're gonna use the information from steps four and five. We're gonna look at our local max or minimum. And it just so happens that our local max is at zero, zero, which is already plotted. Oh, that work's done. Which means we go to the final step, step six, and we plot our inflection points in which we don't have any. So now we are ready to graph. And the way we graph these is we look at the sign chart for the second derivative. So the sign chart for the second derivative says, that from negative infinity to negative one, the graph will be concave up. So that's going to look like this. All of that is concave up. And then it says from negative one to one, the graph will be concave down. So this means if we go down, it's going to look like this from negative one to one. We are concave down. And then the last piece says that from one to infinity, we are concave up. And we have graphed our function using every single step we can even now use step two to check our symmetry. Remember that if you are even, you reflect over the y-axis. So does this function look pretty symmetric over the y-axis? Yes. Yes, so that checks out. And you can even check your limits. We said that as you approach negative one from the left, you'd go to infinity, negative one from the right, you'd go to negative infinity. All that is proven in our limits. So everything comes together to sketch this graph. And done. Whew. So guys, that's exactly what you're going to do for your project. Do not skip any steps.
we how I wrote. Different? What? Are we all getting like different equations? Or oh yeah, that? you all get different equations. Some yeah. people get lucky and get equations that don't have vertical asymptotes at all. So maybe you're the lucky one. If not, then you must. Sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> then you must go through all of this. Are you going right. to do it randomized or are you going to pick on people? Oh, you don't read your emails, do you? <laughs> uh, He's so already assigned them. I already oh. assigned them. I think I saw you. I saw a message, but I 